then we probably are able to, uh, you know, give our message by answering this question. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else talk about this? Yeah, we talked about interactive, interactive. communication skills so that yeah. you won't start a lecturing same. to little children mm -hmm. while I Correct. want. Yeah. Yes, a little bit same, same issue. What yeah. else? We have something else. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, we also talked about like management, class management because they're a popular profession. So all the kids may want to go near that. Oh, yes. Or then they want to rush anywhere, yeah. or yeah. asking where is your yeah. fire engine, yeah. and so on. OK, <laughs> these are the ones, these are the, this is the situation at uh, Finnish schools at the moment. There, is, there are 22 fire departments, regional fire departments. I used to work there for uh, three years for educational planning officer. And I had a uniform, a uniform and so on. So I, I know a little bit of the everyday life at the fire station. So the situation is that let's say uh, Markus would be a firefighter. There would be, uh, and um, Mary would be the, the boss, the fire boss. Yes. Ah. So you would say, OK, we got a phone call from a, from a kindergarten. Please go there and make a safety demonstration or safety teaching. Yeah. And Marcus thinks, what the heck, what shall I talk? Where, where, yeah. where is this, where is this place? Do I find it? No education, almost no education. And uh, they are uh, used to put out fires, mm -hmm. the fighting fires and so on. So we really think that we needed to create a curriculum for the firefighters to help them how to meet the needs of, of the kids of kids. Also, one of the, you remember Mary and Ingrid were talking about the early childhood, uh, this easy, easy center. So uh, there was one, uh, one of the staff could create these pictures, Mariana Corbi is, is her name, so he, she was creating the slides, uh, the frames for me, which are pretty much like. Okay, I skip the Rama campus uh, information. Anyway, so, as you were talking about interaction and meeting the uh, children's de developmental phase and so on, we need child-oriented methods to meet the, the child and to meet their needs and so on. And you remember in, uh, Inkeri said about the, the curriculum, so the early childhood education and care builds on transversal competencies, one of them is taking care of oneself. So that means that we have this in the curriculum of the kindergartens already, the safety and security. So pretty much everybody appreciated, everybody appreciates that the fire, uh, fire department is working as external expert and goes to a, a kindergarten. Okay. So we have this project that is going on and that I'm, where I'm working is called Kiddy Safe. And we, are, uh, we made an agreement with the local fire department to enhance their abilities to meet the kids. And so um, <coughs> the case is that too often, as I told, the fire service carries out these activities solely 
by coincidence, showing the engine, opening the doors, go inside, not talking about the fire safety, not teaching anything. And they have very little background information or education on how to meet uh, little children. Okay, we have this joint venture. And so here is the picture we created earlier about how is it for safety pedagogics. When I started nine years ago at, at university, I think me and uh, my, my colleague Ella Lindfors were the only ones who were talking about safety and security and academic issues together. Today we don't need to approve anything. Everybody knows that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an issue in, in school. Uh, but it took nine years before we got the officials or the minister convinced that this is something you should work with. But here you see that uh, it's, it's not just the teaching is, of course we know this, before, uh, this is like a background and easy to understand for everybody, every one of us, that we need the, the skills and knowledge and attitudes to be able to learn and willingness to, to react and so on and, and have hands-on activities. So what we did with the firefighters, we, in, uh, we invited them to the local fire, um, local Pikkunossi, the kindergarten, for one day, for uh, I think one, uh, one hour, 15 minutes. They were there seeing what the children were doing, uh, participating, for instance, this guy in the middle picture, he was building um, caravan for the for the little for the ladies, little ladies who then went to a uh, car trip, and the guy said, "Okay, I'm going back to the fire station now." So one of the children grabbed um, his uh, index finger and said, "You are not going anywhere. You come with us because we are going to take an excursion to the nearby uh, somewhere, and we are taking some money with us." So we can go to a restaurant and buy some meals for us. <laughs> and so the guy goes, okay. <laughs> um, and so the kids were very interactive. And this was done just to let them know how it is to work with five, six-year-old children. After this picture is taken afterwards, <laughs> they were so happy to get out from the kindergarten. <laughs> Seven hours per day, I would never stand. It was so hard work. Uh, I said, yes, now you know what they are talking about. Okay, they got invitations to a birthday, and there were a lot of other things that happened during that time. Even one of the children, put a, a, a kind of masquerade on one of the firefighters and he, he was playing unicorn. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, that was one of my best working days ever. I wrote a um, little story about it. Uh, you can find it at, uh, in Finnish, unfortunately, but it's in, at the, at the uh, Pikunos's webpage. So, so we wanted the firefighters to learn about children's development, uh, what it means that is child-oriented, uh, what kind of activities we could have at their facilities, and how to make the kids to participate more. And so we built this little fire station in one of the rooms. If you remember the video, uh, they, were, they mentioned about this. And then uh, the firefighter was visiting the group, and you see he's down there. Normally the firefighters are standing, like on 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 a stair or something. Uh, and then uh, then the kids are somewhere down there, so he was advised to be low and uh, listen to the children and so on. And so together with the fire de fire department, we created a fire safety lesson plan, and. Uh, so they wanted the children to be acquainted with the firefighters because sometimes children are afraid. And then we had this toy or tool discussion. I'm going to tell a little bit more about that. And then in the end, if some, everything goes fine, there will be the firefighter equipment show, <laughs> which they are waiting, pretty much waiting for it. And then there are children's questions. And these questions was quite a bit new issue for the firefighters. We wanted the kids to be with, uh, engage to the 
to this lesson and we really pretty much wanted the kids to, to ask their questions because then we get to know how they are structuring and building their thinking and, and what they actually know. Okay, there was this kid and they were asking funny questions. So there was this uh, firefighter and all the equipment on. What is this meter in your equipment? How much air do you have in the bottles now? So that, of course, he, he was answering. Uh, do you sleep at work? Can you play with the computer at the fire station if there are no fires? <laughs> Very good question. Yes, we can. <laughs> yeah, why do firefighters use helmet? How do you know where the fire is? The very good thing, the very good question. All these questions are good. My big brother is not more than 10. Why does he have a knife? <laughs> you might think, think about what is in, the, in this child's head. Okay. Do you go to Sweden? There is <laughs> well, this is what the ministry is thinking. If there is a fire, a big fire in Sweden, they would go there. So the, the, the joint ventures. Do cats and dogs crawl under the smoke? Mm. Yes, they are thinking about their cats and dogs. So this brings all the new world for the firefighters. And this was so exciting. They were more excited to wait, uh, wait for the children's questions than no one of you when you said that you are excited giving the presentation. Because they were just like, okay, if there are something I can't, I don't know how, what to answer and so on. But actually, this was the best part of the lesson because there you could see the interaction. They were both low, children were sitting there, the firefighter was also uh, low on, on his knees, and then they were talking, and there was a perfect understanding. So there was this toy or tool, and we did um, that. The firefighter had show, had shown um, some uh, objects to the children and talking why they are dangerous, why they are not dangerous, which one they can play with, which one are, are tools for adults. And then we did the mini interviews afterwards. The children would come one by one, and uh, we would talk about these uh, objects. Here you see, we just took the uh, object that we were meant for adults to use. There is this one special I prepared. Don't sleep. Syringe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Syringe. Here, I didn't know what is this in English, so I was getting some help. Syringe. No, no. But anyway, so we were looking for how, um, looking at how children were thinking. Uh, why are these objects dangerous? They were, these were six years old children and they were after the firefighter uh, presentation. So, uh, so, uh, so the children, they could easily name these objects that were directly sharp, like a knife, like the needle in the syringe, yes, like the scissors, uh, yeah, everything that was clearly visible, they would say, okay, that's difficult, that's uh, dangerous, because that can make a wound, we could bear, uh, that would um, cause a lot of bleeding and so on. Also, they could pick the scissors, they said that these scissors are for adults, the mine are a smaller one, so they could easily know what was the size, uh, size difference within the, uh, in the scissors. And then also, the, uh, the, uh, the thing about the needle was interesting. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit later about it. But we realized that it was very hard for the kids to understand the chemical reactions. For instance, um, uh, the cleaning, uh, cleaning bottle, for instance, what the uh, liquid was. And um, then the fire, the matches, what does it cause? Um, how the smoke spreads and so on, nobody was telling anything about it. It was just like, you can burn your house, you can burn yourself, but they're just like very, um, pretty much mentioning. There is a glass jar, a little glass jar. <coughs> they thought it, it's not dangerous, but then when we asked, what if it's broken? Then they could think, okay, it's sharp, it can cause a wound. So, 
uh, I think we should put a special emphasis on the on the water-like chemicals, and we should think about more more carefully what kind of uh, things we are getting to children when they are playing, like empty bottles and empty empty packages and so on, because uh, it was very hard for them to understand what would happen. Uh, yes, the syringe was interesting because mainly they said that it's sharp, the needle can harm you. Then, when, then some of the kids from that little group, they said that, okay, it contains a liquid that can be dangerous. Then there were, we had just a small group of children, 16, and then two of them meant, meant uh, that said that the syringe can be infected and can cause a disease. So it is very uh, <coughs> difficult to understand these phases and how are, how are the, the tools, uh, how are they dangerous? <coughs> and this was new for the firefighters because they're just like, so your tool, so your tool, and they're just like, okay, this is different, uh, this is the dangerous because it matches, they're matches. But now they got the information that they must go deeper and explain what causes the danger, what is the danger issue in the object. So we learned from this that it was quite easy to understand the risks of touching sharp objects that were clearly visible, but then uh, then to understand the, the more the chemical processes was more uh, difficult. But we also learned that all the, the youngest kids were like four or five year olds. We could teach them some fire education issues, and they were very willing to learn. They could concentrate 45 minutes on these issues, uh, but be very strong, strongly felt that the firefighters, they really need more information, how to meet with children. And we created these mini lectures for them. They are on our web pages of child's development about using gamification, so life role plays, pedagogic role plays with teaching uh, safety issues and, and then some um, fire educational issues. We, we recorded these uh, presentations. And now we hope we can go on with that, that, do more research on this, and then that we get more funding so that we can show that we, uh, we really want to educate the firefighters. This is something we, the university should do more, to cooperate with the society, not doing science for the science, but doing for the uh, practice. And I, I very much feel that this, um, this has helped the firefighters and the fire departments to, to meet with the kids. And finally, the children's questions, that's, that's uh, very much uh, a way to understand children's thinking and to find a way to their hearts and to their brain. Thank you so much. <laughs>